That's Derek, owner of Farpoint Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina. And today I've got a really interesting question that I was uh, asked by a fellow YouTuber. And I wanted to take a, a little while and make a video kind of describing it. I've never heard this exact question, but I certainly know a little bit about the subject, so I will try to help. This user basically is saying this. I am familiar with CB radio usage from the time that I was a kid. But his situation is this. He lives in a home in the city and has a cabin on a mountain. They're in direct line of sight. That's a good thing, right? Uh, what he's interested in trying to do is CB packet radio. And uh, that's what tonight's going to be talking about. Not necessarily the CB portion of it, because here in the United States that would be illegal. But where he's living, which is out of country, it may be legal. So I will discuss that briefly. But CB packet radio, it was an interesting idea. And to be honest with you, I haven't spent a lot of time thinking about packet radio in many years. But it's a kind of an interesting creation that we had it was popular in the late 80s and certainly through most of the 90s until the internet kind of took over but to sum it up packet radio is the use of a bulletin board system a bbs over radio waves so pretty cool idea now initially this required a piece of hardware that you would hook between your radio and uh, a computer and it would decipher the signals coming in and also send out signals going out that were kind of like a modem signal, right? They didn't sound exactly like a modem signal, but they were quite similar. And these would be transmitted over the air with a much higher error rate uh, allowable, you know, allowance, I guess you could say. So because of the static and possible interference, it still wasn't exactly a perfect technology, but when you sent out a signal, there was a lot of redundancy to that signal, so the speeds were much slower. Say a 56K modem is 56,000 uh, bytes a second or something like that, or maybe a minute. Well, these things were more like 1,200 baud. Um, I think they made some that made it up to 9,600, but were quite unreliable. The one that I actually had when I was playing with it was a 300 baud, and, uh, and most of the time when I was using it, it actually was 110 baud because it was just so much static. I didn't have a great uh, antenna and uh, the only station that did packet radio in my area that I could call in, a BBS, was pretty far off. So 110 usually was a fairly reliable connection over that. But again, and here's some pictures of, of the software and what a BBS looks like. I've never made the video that I planned on making talking about the BBS that I run to this day. Now I don't run a packet radio BBS, but I do have a BBS that runs uh, in an old laptop, uh, same laptop that runs 1670 allows people to call in over Telenet or dial up and, and talk to that BBS. So again, here's another photo of it and message bases. So packet radio is similar to that in the sense that you're, you're sending data back and forth in packets over the airwaves, and you can have the equivalency of a, a BBS. Now most of these, in fact, pretty much anyone that I've ever remember was just purely text-based, but it did have a way of sending email in that packet, you know, BBS, and, or you could send private messages, which is kind of like email of the day, or post a message board. So a lot of the times it was just folks who would get on these message boards and just chime in and say, hey, this is a station, you know, QX157, and I've, I've, I've landed here and, and I made it all the way from Mississippi or whatever. So uh, that's what I remember. Now back to what this gentleman is asking. He wants to know if packet radio is possible on a CB radio. And, of course, here in the United States, that's a no-go. There's restrictions on what you're allowed to transmit on the CB band. No coded messages, things like that. But he's saying he's not in America and uh, says that it, it's not going to be an issue. So uh, based on that assumption, packet radio, what it looks like nowadays, is instead of having a hardware modem that allows you to communicate between the radio, the modem, and then your computer to decipher what's coming through, it's all done via software now. So really what you need to do is make custom cabling uh, that would go from your mic and from your, your uh, speaker output jack. And that's going to allow your two-way communication. So incoming signals are going to be routed through the speaker to your sound card. That sound card is going to decipher that and it will be operating through a program. Those programs are still available. I think uh, Linux systems mostly are the ones I'm thinking of. But again, I haven't really played with this much myself in the recent years. But you'll need that software to decipher those incoming signals. Then you'll need a software, you'll need that hardware patch to send signals back out through your mic and off onto the other side to whatever packet radio. So for yourself, you're kind of talking about building a, a closed system between your house and the countryside, and that's a really cool idea. I'm like really into weird uses for radio, and I like this one, right? So if you have line of sight, you ought to have a fairly decent signal with CB radio without having to do anything, you know, modifications or mods to up the wattage so you should be able to communicate back and forth 
to what end, I don't know, but I guess you could even share files or do whatever you needed to do if you found the right program on both ends. So, Yeah, but Packet Radio, hadn't thought about it in years. Here's this, this really cool guy, you know, sending me an email just off the wall, and it really made me think about it and kind of revisit it. Packet Radio's been around for a long time. It's probably going to be around for a long time. Its popularity has, you know, taken a huge nosedive. The same as regular BBSs after the internet came around and pretty much squashed the need for that. But there are a few dedicated stations out there that still do it. And there's also guys like myself who occasionally want to play with stuff like that. I know we talked last year about hooking a phone patch up to CB, which is legal here in the United States. And uh, that's something that's still on my list to do. I did get a phone patch last year at HamFest, and uh, I'm, still on, I'm still trying to figure out how to get that all wired up. But we'll do an experiment with that here at some point. Anyway, that's it. I, I'm Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms. Hope you enjoyed this little walk down <laughs> packet radio history. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Until then, well, I'll see you next time. Take care. There's always something that needs a little fixing on Far Point Farms. Freedom is mighty sweet.